Hi, do you have a marketing department there? What about if it was really cheap, like uh, next to nothing? Well, my management company is selling the car race by race. Um, we sold it, well, we've had sort of various sponsors this year. We've had Worldcom, JVC, Greenlight Insurance, CMG, quite a few people. He's his own best salesman and it shows his commitment to the course. Um, you know, I've had countless numbers of racing drivers approach me since I started Marvellous Sports Management. And every one of them I've challenged to come in and get on the phone. Um, every one of them has asked me for a lot of money. None of them have actually come and done it. Adam's the only one. I would imagine it's unique. I've, I've always done it though. I've, I mean, I used to do it by actually going out and, and writing letters, sending thousands and thousands of letters off. Um, sort of all day, every day. It's pretty much what I was doing for a couple of years when I was in Formula First, Formula Ford. Um, but Nick's since sort of educated me that getting on the phone is far better. You can be more um, discriminative. You know, you can get rid of the time wasters, and there are a lot of time wasters. You know, um, there's a lot of people that won't even listen to you. It was Adam's determination that convinced Nick to gamble everything he owns, setting up a sports agency to guide Adam's career. Nick's inspiration is to emulate men like Don King and American sports agent Drew Rosenhaus. But getting Adam into Formula 3 has been a big investment. I won some money in court from my last company. I'd managed to save quite a bit of money and, and all of that's gone into it. I've now remortgaged my house as well um, so that we can actually keep this going and, and keep going where we need to get. And it is a big gamble, but um, I wouldn't do it if I didn't have every faith in Adam to deliver it. And, um, you know, he's the first person I think I've met that sort of I can see that commitment that, that I saw in myself and he's willing to put absolutely everything on the line to deliver what he needs to do. And um, if he can't do it, he, he's going to die trying. Thanks for your help anyway. Cheers. Bye. The third race weekend of the season comes at Donington Park. Adam begins the day in fourth place in the championship, boosted by a runners-up spot on the previous race weekend at Snetterton. Justin is still well behind championship leader Matthew. Two wins, a second and a third, have given Matthew a commanding lead. Adam, meanwhile, has twice finished on the podium in the first four races, despite his mechanical problems and the lack of testing. It's a promising start, but Adam's hopes of claiming his first win were not helped by more problems with his car in qualifying. As a result, He'll start both the day's races well down the grid, though he's still in front of Matthew in the first race. This time Justin will start just ahead of both his teammates. He's in seventh place on the grid. Bobby wants to see all three of his drivers on the podium. So far, he's more than happy with his team's debut season. Adam makes a brilliant start, moving up from eighth to second on the first lap. But hopes of victory disappear when he's forced off by a collision with one of the A-cars. In his absence, Justin cashes in, taking third. Matthew trailing in at number six. Adam is left feeling more frustrated than ever. The hairpin and then a couple tangled. But I'll tell you what, they're, they're suicidal, isn't it? It's just crazy. Eight, eight, like, so eight places in the first. Yeah, in the first couple of laps. Yeah. I mean, he should be on pole for the races and then it, it clear up, but it's just because he's not got a good setup yet. So we need to get him out, we need to get him out testing. And yeah. get the, the management are convinced their driver needs more it testing. Good, it was a good first lap. You must have got a good start. It's so easy to store these cars, you know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. While Adam comes to terms with his latest setback, Justin celebrates his first podium finish. Meanwhile, Nick has decided there'll be no stopping for lunch. Just going to go and do some work now. Got to go around all the hospitality boxes just to try and drum up some sponsorship, see if anyone's interested. Don't want to put their name on a cup. Uh, we can, can we go that way? Yeah, I think we can. Uh, 
Um, we're still short on budget and we're uh, offering knockdown rates on his car. You would have to put it all in to us in writing, I'm afraid. Okay. There's no one here that would be able to make a decision just like that. Looking for sponsors for next year? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, the thing is, I mean, I don't have anything to do with that side of it. It's worth going to see these people. You never know what you can turn over rather than rather than just sitting around moping about the first race. Might as well actually get some work done, you know. Hi. No good. Yeah, they said uh, their kids are racing, so they won't sponsor anyone else. How dare you! <laughs> You're peasants! It was a bit like that. How yeah. dare you come from the ghetto and I come from royal? Get out of my face! <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad. But you get the idea, yeah. Back on the track, Adam needs points to stay in contention for the championship. And once again, he shows his potential with a quick start. In the first two laps, Adam moves up from ninth to fourth holding off teammate Matthew for most of the race. It's a confrontation that will split the team. Matthew claims Adam has ruined his chance of winning the race as the two teammates finish third and fourth. But once again, Adam insists his car has let him down. It's a familiar story. We need to test, and we can't test, we can't get rid of the understeer, which we've had from the start, and we, we can't do any better. He seems to fly on the first two laps, and then they seem to catch him up. It's this ability thing again, the, the tyres. You know, I'll tell you something, when you go out in those first few, the tyres are cold, uh -huh. and they don't work, and you slide them over the place. But he's, he's, he's killing everyone. I know. If we get rid of the understeer, or majority of the understeer, bang, it took maybe not two seconds, but almost two seconds quicker than that, I think. I really do. I don't know if I can get rid of the understeer if it's possible. But that's not Adam's only problem. Team boss Bobby blames Adam for not moving aside when Matthew wanted to overtake. But Bobby backs down when Adam confronts him on camera. The only thing I'm saying is that when your teammate is there, you can at least hold your line on the straight. I treat everybody the same, yeah. doesn't matter who. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, it's your I was really upset with what he said. I was not in a good mood at the time. You're gaining the places when there's no grip on the tyres. Yeah. Then when there's grip on the tyres, then their cars are better, they're yeah. coming through. So we need to test to get this setup correct. And then, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'll annihilate them. 